Today I'll be restoring our bathtub with a Rust-Oleum tub and tile restoration kit. And I'll be talking about the things I learned, the do's and don'ts, and I'll be talking about if it's really worth doing or not. So our bathtub when we moved into this place was in rough shape. The enamel on the bottom had completely peeled up and it started to crack and move and chip towards the sides. And it was all an off-white color that uh, was pretty hideous to be honest. So we needed to do something about this and this was the cheapest and most affordable option. So I started with removing the silicone using a silicone scraper, which was fairly easy. And I also taped up the drain hole. So I put pieces of tape over the drain hole and then I used a X-Acto knife to cut around and just so that the drain hole was covered, but we had access to all the rest of the tub and there wasn't tape over it. So what I was informed to do was give everything a light sanding with a 100 grit sandpaper, clean that out with a vacuum and a dry cloth, tape up the edges so that I wouldn't get any paint stripper or paint on the walls or floor. And then what I did was I used this eco-friendly paint stripper, which is something that I don't recommend doing because unfortunately it didn't work as well as it needed to. I think if you have the right kind of paint stripper, this technique does work. And what I used was a uh, razor blade paint scraper to scrape it up. But with this bad paint stripper, uh, essentially what happened was it didn't make the paint or the enamel soft enough. So the scraper would just dull out almost immediately and the blades would need to be changed and it was just not working. So I ended up taking an electric sander to the uh, bathtub and that actually worked very well. And I was worried about sort of damaging the underneath of the tub, um, but I just lightly sanded. And even though there was still like a little bit of the old enamel left on the tub, then I was able to scrape that off much easier than if I hadn't taken the electric sander to this. So this is an option if you don't have a good paint stripper. Otherwise, I would recommend just trying to get a more industrial, a higher strength paint stripper because this enamel that's on these bathtubs is quite strong. It's not just your regular interior wall paint. It is uh, much stronger than that and it needs that heavy duty stuff. So once I got this cleaned, I used muric acid, which is an etching solution. And this is pretty heavy duty stuff. So make sure you follow the instructions well, use a respirator and make sure that you have some venting going on. This is really extreme stuff. Make sure you, you have all of your personal protective equipment on. And what this does is it gets the surface ready for the new enamel to adhere to the tub. And what it does is it sort of creates, it, it etches in little tiny grooves and pockets that you can barely notice, but it, it makes the surface um, not so smooth. So then the refinishing kit can actually hold on to your tub much better than if it was just the smooth surface after the paint scraping and sanding. So the next step is to get your tub and tile kit ready and mixed. And with this Rust-Oleum kit, it's a two-part epoxy. And so what I did was because I wanted to do a certain amount of layers, I had to measure part of this out and save part of it in the can so that uh, I could wait the hours necessary for it to dry and be able to have more to use. Now, the best application of this two-part epoxy is with a spray gun. You're gonna get your smoothest coats. You're gonna have less bubble problems. The pamphlet or the, the instructions do say that if you can't do that, to use a brush. And I found online that people were talking about a brush not working very well and that actually a foam roller works the best. So I ended up using a foam roller, but the foam roller that I bought was cheap. And what happened after a while was it would start to degrade and break. And there was actually little chunks of foam that would get kind of lost and, and it would get mixed in and on the surface of your bathtub. Um, so I had to go through and pick all of these out and that would actually create quite a bit of a problem. And, and this is, leads into the biggest problem that I faced with this tub restoration and that's dirt and little bits of even hair and dust and 
pieces of that foam roller getting stuck on the surface of the tub and me not really being able to pick out every single one of those because how do you pick something out and keep the surface smooth? You have to go over it again and then you might be adding more dirt and grime back into the uh, tub. So that was definitely the biggest struggle. It did work out. That's just the number one concern is making sure that your surface is clean and that somehow your surface stays clean as you roll onto it or as you spray onto it or brush onto it. The other tip I can give you is to start on the inside of the tub and the back wall of the tub and work your way forward towards you so that you're not leaning over parts that have already been finished. I mean, overall, I think anybody can really do this. Uh, this isn't a, an insane job. Uh, this is very, very simple stuff. It's just painting, really, um, when it comes down to it. It's just the material is a little bit different, and the stripping is easily the most difficult part of this entire process. This does off-gas pretty strongly, so we actually moved out into our motorhome for the three days of me working on this, but you don't have to do that if you sealed up your bathroom really well. Uh, I did become kind of nose blind to this after a while, even with a respirator. Overall, I think this result is about a thousand times better than the tub that we had before. It's still not perfect. It is a DIY. It is a, a you know homeowner doing this, not a professional, but it worked and it did the job. And we now have a bright, brand new feeling, sparkly white tub. And now it's just the rest of the bathroom we need to fix, <laughs> including these hideous wall panels. If you plan on doing this, uh, let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions, if you have any concerns, or if you have any additional tips that you've learned from your experience doing this. If you're interested in seeing a little bit more in depth of this process, I actually film daily vlogs of all three days that I worked on this restoration. And that playlist is popping up right now. Thanks everybody for watching and we'll see you on the next video.